How's it going YouTube? This is Levi from Bayfoils and today we're gonna get into it with a video breaking down one of the most common misconceptions about eFoils. Do flight boards feel like you're doing a wheelie? This is a very common misconception that uh, a lot of people think when they picture eFoils, specifically flight boards, and uh, we're gonna kind of Take it apart piece by piece using science. We're gonna talk about how eFoils work. We're gonna talk about what factors into the ride experience. And we're going to really talk about how that misconception of the eFoil wheelie is not really the case for every rider. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe for more videos like this, and let's get into it. First thing we're gonna go over is what a hydrofoil really is and how it works. A hydrofoil is essentially <clears throat> two wings, a front wing that provides lift based on uh, a number of factors, and a rear wing, a stabilizer, that provides downward force to make it easier to control. You could ride a hydrofoil with just the front wing, I've done it on accident, but it is very hard to control. So the stabilizer is kind of important as it provides a vital aspect of control for us. But let's first define how we're actually getting our lift. It's kind of a little bit confusing because a lot of people are probably familiar with airplanes and how they provide lift. You know, here's our lift equation. This is one half rho uh, density, uh, V squared velocity times area times coefficient of uh, lift. Those are both <clears throat> based on the wing itself. The faster you go, the, the more lift you're gonna have, and it's squared, so you increase your speed times two, and you're actually increasing your lift by times four. So in general, speed is our number one contributor. But that's for aerofoils, and it's actually not really, not really correct. So a lot of people, yeah, it's kind of common knowledge how uh, one of the principles of lift is achieved. We have the asymmetrical taper that creates air to go stream over the top of the wing to take a longer distance than the air stream or fluid stream under the bottom that creates a pressure differential that creates a lift. This is not 100% accurate. This isn't our prime lift indicator. Um, our prime lift indicator with a hydrofoil is actually the angle of attack of the front wing. The density of water is so much more than air that if you have a really sharp angle of attack, there's gonna be a lot of force from that water hitting that front wing, creating lifting effect. This is essentially how pump foiling, you're able to continually keep your speed up and generate lift just by drastically increasing your angle attack and then leveling it out and gliding. That pumping mechanic is essentially a demonstration on how that front wing angle of attack is our prime lift generator. Um, not going to go super into detail on lift versus drag and all that kind of stuff, but essentially the engineers that make these hydrofoils really do the science. They really know what they're doing. And they've engineered the foils in such a way that you're gonna get good lift at between, you know, zero and like 10 degrees angle of attack. Zero to 10 sweet spot is kind of where you wanna be for the majority of your riding. Any more than 10, you're you're just getting diminishing returns. You're ending up creating more drag than you are tr creating lift, and you end up stalling the foil. How does this translate to riding a flight board and doing a wheelie? The other factor in our lift for our hydrofoil is our stabilizer. So our stabilizer provides downward force. What that does is when we're getting lift from our front wing, the stabilizer pushes down on our back wing to make the pitch changes, the up and down, and roll changes and yaw changes more manageable. Without the stabilizer, anytime we change in pitch, roll, up and down, it just 
really is uncontrollable with your body. So the stabilizer is there to c fix that. So now the, the two main reasons why your foil is going to ride like a wheelie is the main one that we see all the time is people not riding fast enough or not positioning their body in a proper way for the speed they're riding at. When you're riding slow, because velocity is really important to our lift equation, it's velocity squared, you, you have to compensate that by putting a lot of angle on the back, putting a lot of weight on the board. Um, that extra angle is gonna give you the lift that you need to keep it up off the water. But the faster you go, the less you need to put weight on the back, you can more ride it at a, at a flatter angle. That being said, the there is a certain balance between the foil and the stabilizer and that's the other reason that people, we see it all the time where it feels like you're doing wheelie even though you're riding fast enough it's where we have a mix, mixed match set so if you look here on flightboard's website cruiser 1800 their largest most stable wing it's used at flight schools around the world they really sell this wing as like this is the first wing that you should learn to ride on but for a lot of people especially flight schools that don't understand how the foil works they'll put you on an 1800 cruiser but then they will put you on the standard stabilizer they won't put you on the 500 stabilizer it really needs the bigger stabilizer because as you remember as i said if you have more lift in the front you need to compensate that by with more downward force in the back Otherwise, you're going to get a net lifting effect on the front of the board. That's what contributes to the wheeling. Now, the other part of this hot take is shims for the stabilizer. Uh, some people say on the internet, well, I shouldn't have to use a shim to fix the, the wheelie aspect of the flight board, which is kind of ridiculous because if you look at the majority of high-end uh, foil, systems like not just e-foils but just foil boards like most of the manufacturers out there the high-end ones provide some sort of customization for your wings there's no industry where less customization is better i worked in the music industry for many many years and having your amplifier that has a bunch of different settings and knobs um you know effects loops bypass that all that extra stuff is like better limited options is not better now why would flight board set up their flight schools with a wing that provides too much front foot pressure too much lift make it that wheelie thing the main thing is safety it means your board isn't going to pearl you can really lean forward basically as much as possible and that nose isn't going to go in the water and so for a beginner that really doesn't have a lot of experience trimming, sending the board nose first in the water means they're going to get launched in front of it, fall in the water in front of the foil, and you're going to run the risk of getting run over. So beginner setups are really designed so that if you fall, you're going to fall towards the back because all that lift is going to send the board up out of the water and you're going to be behind. Filter freak out for a second there. This is intentional. This is by design. Flightboard is really concerned with safety of the riders because they know that enough enough people really injure themselves on hydrofoils. Governments are going to step in and ban this stuff. They want safety to be a key factor to their design principles so that they, we don't ruin it for everyone. Don't get these things banned, and then nobody can ride a flight uh, e-foil, whether you ride a lift or a waydo or a git foil or whatever. Safety is it really important. The other thing too is it's performance. You know, if your foil bogs down just because of a little bit of decrease in speed, or it's just pitchy up and down, it makes it really hard to push the limits to the next level. If you look at these guys on the internet, like these really avid e-foilers that are like going above and beyond, like surfing Nazare, doing jumps, wingtip breach turns, like the really cool stuff, they're all on flight boards and they have zero issues keeping the board nice and level because they've dialed their ride in. They have the amount of lift that they need, amount of front foot pressure, amount of wheelie they need to keep it super level when you're doing a hard bank turn or to 
land it when you're doing a jump or to keep it manageable when you're blasting down big surf. I have a customer, he surfs Ocean Beach regularly in 15 to 18 foot swell. He had a lift, he sold it and got a flight board because of the customization options and the positive lift so that it doesn't nosedive and pearl and he doesn't get crushed by 18 foot OB swells. I'm not trying to just be a flight board fanboy that drinks the whole Kool-Aid. There's things about the other brands that I like, like I really dig that Lyft can use other brands' foils, like I ride Axis foils and Armstrongs when I'm subsurfing or, fo or wing foiling. If I could use those wings on my flight board, it'd be really cool. But at the end of the day, the wheelie and the needing shims on a flight board, it's not a bad thing. It's only good things. That lift makes it so that you're not fighting the board every time you're trying to do a, a cool turn or jump or something crazy that you would just struggle more with a brand that isn't providing as much lift or stability. At the end of the day, it's really going to take trying it out to really decide whether it's a deal breaker or not for you and dialing it in to figure out how to ride that feels good for you. You know, it took me a long time of trial and error to figure out which wing and stabilizer combo that I like that rides for how I like it. You know, if you want it to feel nice and flat where you're not getting lift in the front, there's a combo that'll work for you. You know, for me, I use a, a, a 1100 Flow S with the new Cruiser Jet 300 stabilizer. That, for my weight and how I ride, that 300 stabilizer balances that 1100S perfectly. Feels great. My legs don't get tired. I can go on like a two hour ride and not feel like I'm leaning, doing a lunge the whole time. And you know, I'm lucky that I got a shop. I got all the wings in stock and I've been able to trial and error it. You know, if you don't have that privilege, find your local partner, find your local affiliate, demo some wings, try some stuff out. You know, it's going to take a little bit to customize it because everyone has a different body shape. Everyone has a different ride style. But at the end of the day, the, the foil that's going to work great for you and the shim and all that factors is going to work great for you. It's not always going to work great for everybody else. I'm going to put a link in the video description for some of the resources that I used for the science stuff on this video. Uh, you know, both NASA and MIT have free educational um, web pages you can browse on the internet about aerospace engineering and hydrofoiling. Um, so if you want to learn about this hobby that we love to do, hydrofoils, the, the information is out there. You just have to search for it and, and read. It's kind of dense stuff, but there's pictures. Hopefully this video didn't turn into too much of a rant, um, but you know, it's kind of necessary to set the record straight for some of this misinformation that gets spread around on the internet. Well, that's the end of the video. Put put your feelings in the comments. If you know this was informative, tell us. If it was uninformative, tell us. If you think I'm just a flight board fanboy kook, tell me. I don't care. Comments are good for the engagement. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this, and we'll hope to see you on the water.